But look at Mark chapter 4, very familiar scripture we're going to read tonight. And uh, probably not tell you anything different that you don't already know. Uh, but just a good reminder tonight. We find the disciples in a boat right here. And uh, if you know what's taking place, you have to go back to the uh, first part of the chapter and you find out that the Lord is in, in a ship. He uh, has pushed out a little bit away from the, uh, from the shore and that there on the Sea of Galilee. And uh, He is in the boat and He is... Uh, teaching people on the shore, and he is uh, there's little boats around him, and so no doubt uh, folk are listening that are in these other little boats, and uh, and so he's been teaching them, and he's been teaching them probably uh, about all day. The Bible said there in verse one that uh, that that he began to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship uh, and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And I've never been over there. Uh, but I've looked, I looked today, as a matter of fact, at pictures and videos of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, that sea is surrounded in that by mountains uh, all the way around it. And so I can imagine it was a great amphitheater uh, that the Lord used and that to teach those by the seaside uh, and out of Galilee. And he begins to teach and uh, he teaches them about all day. And we come down in that to verse 35. And the Bible says, In the same day when the even was come, uh, he saith unto them, Let us pass over. Uh, unto the other side. Uh, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hundred part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly. You know, they were fearful just a few minutes ago, but now the Bible said they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Heavenly Father, we come to you. We pray that you'd help us uh, while we might preach for just a little while, I pray you'd give us instruction that from the Word of God and that direction by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, if there's one lost, save them, need, folk need help. Uh, Lord, I pray they'd find it out of the Word of God and by direction tonight. And we'll tell you in it we love you. Give us an unction from the Holy One. And Lord, we just want to tell you that we love you and thank you for loving us. For this in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want to preach tonight for just a little while. Uh, having a thought on uh, when your boat gets full. Uh, because if you look right here, you find that uh, the Bible said that as the winds beat uh, uh, into the ship, so that it was now full. Now, I believe that when your Bible says that it was full, F-U-L-L, -L, I, I, I believe it was full. I, I believe the boat was standing at, uh, in water, uh, uh, but something miraculous was going on right there, uh, that that boat was still floating, uh, uh, being full of water. Uh, can I say tonight that as we look at this passage of Scripture, we find that uh, it was a fearful time uh, uh, and that for the disciples. I tried everywhere in the world to work me up a message tonight uh, uh, on fearing and fighting uh, and yet having faith. And I tried to figure that out and just couldn't get there. It just wasn't going to work. Uh, uh, but tonight we find that these disciples, uh, uh, as this boat was getting uh, uh, and that full, they began to get more and more fearful uh, uh, as it began to get more and more uh, out of their control. Hey, can I tell you, there's going to be times I, uh, when things get out of our control. Uh, can I say that most of the time uh, situations are out of our control anyway? Uh, we just feel like they're in our control and so we feel good about things. Kind of like driving down the road, ain't it? Uh, uh, you sit behind the car and got your hand on the steering wheel uh, uh, and you feel like you're in control. Uh, you can control the brakes, you can control the, the gas, uh, uh, you can turn the steering wheel, but you know that at any given time uh, uh, something can go wrong with that vehicle uh, and you're no longer uh, uh, in control. Uh, that's kind of like our life sometimes, the way that we feel about things. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, uh, he said, for when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but were troubled uh, on every side. Without were fightings, and within were fears. And Paul said, we fear about what was going on. Let me say tonight that you may fear what's going on in the world tonight, 
uh, listen, you may fear about everything that's taken place with uh, all the rioting and all the looting. You may fear and add uh, about the COVID-19, about the virus. Uh, uh, but let me say this tonight before we go any further. Uh, how the Lord's still in control. I, I, he ain't got excited about things. He knows what's going on tonight. Amen. Uh, let me say, number one tonight, uh, uh, when your boat gets full, uh, I want you to see, number one, first of all, the plan of the Lord. Uh, what did he say right there? He said, let us pass over unto the other side. He had a plan, didn't he? Hey, can I tell you tonight that uh, the Lord's always got a plan for me and you. Now again, I go back, I'm not a Calvinist nor a hyper-Calvinist that says uh, God has set out everything in order I, I, and this is the way it's going to be and we're just going to go right down through here I, and check everything off. I don't believe that's how it works. I, I, but let me say this, that the Lord I, had a plan. Uh, can I say that as he had a plan, he said, let us pass over to the other side. Uh, uh, he gave them direction. Uh, they knew the will of God. Hey, can I ask you tonight, do you know the will of God uh, for your life? Have you been following uh, and that the will of God for your life? You say, well, the will of God for my life uh, is to work and I uh, raise my family in church and I uh, uh, raise my children and do what I can uh, and act for the cause of Christ uh, where I'm at. Okay, that's good. Are you doing it? Amen. Uh, listen, a lot of people, they we get to talk about the will of God and uh, folk feel like that uh, we're trying to make preachers out of folk, missionaries out of folk, send them to the other side of the world. Hey, I'm going to tell you tonight, God needs people right where they're at, uh, uh, working their job, tithing and giving money uh, and sending out missionaries uh, and praying and raising their kids uh, uh, so that they can serve God. Uh, listen, all I'm asking tonight is do you know the will of God and are you doing it tonight? Amen. That's the question. Listen, uh, uh, they were very. it was very audible uh, when he said, let us pass over to the other side. Can I say that as they started out, I, I, they could see him, couldn't they? And they could touch him. And they could hear him. Have you ever started out doing anything for the Lord that you felt like maybe the Lord wanted you to do? I, I, you know, and I, I, maybe it's a witness to a neighbor, and, and boy, you just know God's going to show up, and I, you know God's going to be there, and they're going to get saved tonight. Tonight's their night that they're going to get saved. And boy, you get there and you've got a track in your hand and you just know God's going to show up. And boy, you get over there and their kids is running around like wild Indians and the TVs are blaring and nothing's going right. But yeah, you still take your time to go witness to them. And they may get saved later on. They may not get saved that night, but you never know what you're sowing in somebody's heart. Listen, he was with them. They could see him and they could touch him. And let me say this tonight, they should have known uh, that there was nothing to worry about. All they had to do was follow what the Lord said. Just go the other side. Now it's easy for me to look at this story and say, why did they get worried? Why didn't they just, you know, they heard him say that. They heard him audibly say, we're going to go to the other side. It was plain. I, I listened, they could understand that thing. And they knew that he was on board. But something changed. I want you to look at what your Bible said in verse 35 in the same day when the even was come. You realize it's getting dark. The evening was coming. You know, it gets dark at evening time, don't it? And you know, as they go out on this boat, y'all ever been out in the middle of the water of the night time, been night fishing, and not have any... Now listen, now I'm not talking about night fishing... Uh, like what we have today. Yeah, a lot of times, depending on where you're at, uh, you might see houses and lights out uh, and about, and the moon might be out, and uh, it'd be a smooth night out there, and you could still see, or you might have some lanterns with you or some lights, but these boys go out uh, in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, and then all of a sudden, while they go out there, that storm blows up. And so no doubt as that storm blows up, the clouds roll in. And I, and I can imagine there was no moon that night. I, I, they probably didn't have much of a light with them. I, I, and they're in the middle of this boat. I, I, and they're looking at everything coming in against them. You know, I, I went online today and, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to look at some, uh, sto some storms that are on the sea. And then don't I mean, why don't you just go look and see if you can find some on the Sea of Galilee. And sure enough, there was some on there. And you know those waves, they depended on how bad the wind was blowing. And it wasn't raining. I, I, listen, when the ones that I looked at, the wind just rolled off those mountains that was around it. I, and they would fall down into that sea. I, and they caused that sea to get in turmoil. I, and, and it said right here that what? I, I, it said that there was a great 
storm of wind. I didn't say there was a great storm. I don't believe that it was thundering and lightning out there and carrying on. I, I believe just what the Bible says. I believe that the wind come down upon that sea and begin to rock that boat to and fro. Let me ask you tonight, how many times, I'm getting ahead of myself here tonight, how many times in our life has the storm just showed up, the wind showed up, I, I, and listen, just rocked our boat to and fro. You look at number two, the severity of the tempest right here, and it was a great storm of wind. It wasn't a little wind. Yeah, I bet they could hear it. You ever heard the wind blow? You ever heard it whistle around your house? I mean, boy, when I mean it's a blowing, and uh, listen, I, I, uh, when it when it when it whistles at our house, it's a blowing. I mean, it's a really getting with it when it's a whistle. And I can imagine, I'm trying to get you a picture painted tonight. These boys are on this little boat. They're on this little ship. They're, listen, it's not a great big boat. I mean, it could probably hold around 15 people, and there's probably 13 in it, uh, uh, 12 disciples, and Jesus is in this thing. And so they're going across, and it's got dark, and the wind's got up, and it begins to blow. And there's a great storm of wind and it beats. Notice what your Bible said. That what? And the waves beat into the ship. They just didn't gently rock over the side and fall in. They beat into the ship. I believe it beat on the ship. You know, there's a lot of times in the tempest of our life it beats on us, don't it? Brother Jeff talked about Satan trying to rob our peace and and Jacob talked about the comforter coming and helping us. There's, there's a lot of times that uh, the storm just comes and it just, it just beats on us, don't it? What was it that Paul said that he prayed to the Lord thrice about? What was it that the messenger of Satan that had come to what? Buffet on him. You know what that means? He was getting beat on. That's what Satan does. He beats on us. And you know what? When a storm arises in our life, whether it's of our own making, whether it is a, a trial that God has sent our way, or whether He has pulled His hedge back and allowed Satan to beat up, uh, uh, listen, he, he does begin to do that. But look what it said. It said that what? That that ship was full. You know, there's times that we feel like our little boat gets full, don't it? You ever felt like that your boat was just full and you couldn't take on no more? Reckon them boys was trying to bail water. I, 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 you ever try to bail water with a bucket? And, and, you got a, and you've got a three-gallon a three pail and you're taking in four gallons every time. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You're taking in more than you can get out sometimes. Kind of feel that way. Kind of feel that way in our Christian life. We, we know what the Lord wants out of us. He just wants us to be faithful. He just wants us to serve. He I just wants us to come to church. He wants us to raise our family right. He wants husbands to love their wives and wives to love their husbands. And, uh, just be faithful on the job. And That's all He wants. And we're just trying to do what we're supposed to do. And out of nowhere, a storm blows up and begins to beat into our little ship. And begins to fill it up. It must have been pretty bad. Can I ask you how many times have we ever been there? Maybe mentally he's beat on us. We know he beats on us spiritually. We understand that. But listen, he beats on us mentally and, and tries to wear us down. And tries to get us to change our mind in serving the Lord. To say, you know, if, if you wasn't serving God, none of this stuff would be happening. See, you don't know that to be the truth because, listen, these lost folk face these bad times all the time. How would you like to be lost facing what you face if you didn't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to help you and comfort you and read this book right here? So the severity of the tempest was it beat on this ship, it filled this ship, and because they looked at this ship, no doubt they were beginning to get worried because it was now full and wondered how much more it could take. Number three, look at the place of the Lord. The plan of the Lord was to go to the other side, but look at His place right here. The Bible said, And He was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. 
Now these boys, now listen, he knew the storm was coming. You ever, now think about that for just a second. He knew what was going to happen. The disciples didn't know what was going to happen because if they knew what was going to happen, they would have probably never went out in the middle of that sea. Ain't that like us? I mean, for folk that like to fish and have a boat, Brother Jeff, if you know that things are going to be tough, you don't go out there in the middle of it. But yet the Lord said, let us pass over unto the other side. So they push off and head that way. And so he knew the storm was coming, but yet he wasn't worried. He lays down on the, in the hinder part of the ship. Now that's very important. Stay with me. In the hinder part of the ship, and the Bible said he was asleep on the pillow. Now I don't know if that is a pillow like as we know today that we sleep with our head on. Uh, if you actually look up the word pillow, it's not only that type of a pillow, but it's also the part of the ship that guides the sail. Now, if the Lord's going to be asleep on the ship and going to sleep on a pillow, you need Him to sleep on the part that's going to guide the boat. I'll tell you that right now. That ought to preach a while. Amen. Even though he was asleep, he was still guiding uh, that little ship right there. And let me say tonight, uh, that in the midst of the storm, uh, even in the midst of his sleep, uh, he was still in control. But he was in the hinder part of the ship. And no doubt that those disciples, number four, we see the fear of the disciples, they're looking at everything that's going on around them, and he's laid off in the hinder part of the ship. You reckon they were standing on this boat looking at the Lord and wondering if He was going to wake up and wondering what He was going to do. Now we know what happens, but stay with me. I'm trying to paint a picture here. I, I get this in my mind sometimes. I, I, listen, they, they had let Him sleep enough for that ship to get full. They had let Him sleep enough for them to try to row in the direction that they need to go. They had let Him sleep long enough that their life, had, they felt like it had got in jeopardy. Can I ask you a question? Why did they wait till then? Why do we wait until we're cast down and fearful and we're wore out and, and we can't handle it no more and we can't take no more uh, and we just can't do it no more? Then we look up to heaven and say, Lord, don't you care that we perish down here? Why had they quit talking to him? You say, well, he was asleep. Yeah, but they wake him up, don't they? They could have woke him up at any time. But yet they waited to wake him up until it is a time they say, Master, carest thou not that we perish? You know, the Bible talks about, I believe it was in the book of Luke over there, uh, that, that their life uh, had become in jeopardy. It had got... Jeopardize. That, that word jeopardy means an exposure to death or, or a hazard or a danger. said in Luke, he said, but as they sailed, he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. But yet they wait until that boat's full and yet they wait and, uh, until they are at their wit's end that they don't know what to do and then they go wake up the master. They see the storm, they hear the storm, they know it's dark, they knew they couldn't do anything, and Jesus has yet to wake up and come out. And I mean, they've got fear and anxiety like they've never had. But yet they wait until that little boat's full. Why do we do that? Can I ask you, has... Fear ever gripped you? Be honest. You don't have to shake your head or raise your hand. But has fear ever gripped you? Well, if you're lost tonight, fear ought to grip you. You know, the Bible said, don't fear him who can kill your body. But he said, rather fear him uh, who can kill your body and your soul and cast your soul in hell. He said, that's the one to fear. You fear the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if they sometimes thought if the Lord didn't care. Because they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Lord, don't you see what's going on around us? Don't you care about what's happening? 
Have you ever looked up to heaven and said, Lord, do you not see what's happening to my little boat? Don't you care? Don't you see the situation that we're in? Don't you see the problem? And by the way, Lord, you're the one that told us to go this way. <laughs> Think about that for just a second. And so as he was in the hinder part of the ship, they come and wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And so number five, we see the power of the Lord. He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Would you like to have seen that? I'd have liked to have seen that. They rouse him up. They wake him up. He was not worried. That boat was going to the other side. If it had water parted on both sides of it and was pouring out of it, I, if water was being generated inside that boat and coming out of it, that boat was going to the other side. It couldn't help itself. It had to. It had to go to the other side. The Lord said, let us pass over to the other side. Are you getting a little carried away there? No, I know him. I've been around him enough to know that when he says, let us go over to the other side, we're going to the other side. But notice the power of the Lord. He had power over nature. He stood out there on the bow of the boat and said, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. What was raging now laid down. What was beating into the ship has now become calm and still. Has he ever done that for you? In your heart, and whispered up in your ear, said, Peace, be still. And he just took care of it. No longer have to worry. No longer have to be concerned. Have you ever watched God do that for somebody else? You ever know folk to just be in the middle of a storm and you know it's torment uh, in their life, uh, but yet they have depended on the Lord and He's gave them peace. On the inside. I think that's kind of the way the Apostle Paul was in Acts chapter 27. After the Lord come by, I almost think it's the way he was before the Lord come by. But after the Lord come by with that angel over there and said, Paul, you gotta, you got to go see Caesar in Rome. you got to get there. and I'm going to get you there. He said, be of good cheer. They've been 14 days and nights without eating. They hadn't seen the sun or the stars I, I, in all those days. I, I, and he stands out there and says, be of good cheer. Don't you hate that when somebody, that you're in the middle of a storm and somebody comes by and smiles at you and just says, be of good cheer. Be, you know, be happy. It'll be okay. And you just, Ugh! they don't know. Maybe they do know. Maybe they've been there. Maybe they've been in a worse place than you've been. Maybe your boat's just half full and theirs has been all the way full and they do know the one that can get them through. But the power of the Lord was that He was able to step out on the boat. And the Bible said there was a great calm. I'm glad He can calm us in the midst of everything. He can calm us. In the midst of all the trials, in the midst of all the problems, in the midst of the shape of our nation, and our nation is in pitiful shape. My dad made an astute observation the other day. As I tell you, I talk to him every morning, and he will tell you. He tells me from time to time. We talk about biblical things and spiritual things, and he'll tell you I'm not a real spiritual man, son. And he he tells me that from time to time. But you know, he, he told me the other morning, he said, and how, why we got off on this, I don't know, but he said, you know, even the Lord judged Israel for their sin and all the things that they went through. You know, we asked God to help our nation to stop all this. It may not be that God needs to stop all this. It may be that, that our nation needs to turn to the Lord. Maybe it is judgment, friend. Maybe it is, God is trying to get folks' attention. You ever think about that? He's never let nations go. Those that have turned their back upon Him, He's never let those nations go without judgment. I don't know what the Lord's trying to do or what He's trying to accomplish, but I do know this tonight, that we just need to be faithful in the midst of all of it. 
That's what Jeremiah was. We've been studying the book of Jeremiah. God was judging the nation of Israel and Jeremiah was remaining faithful in the midst of all of it. That's what we're to do. And so number six, we see the rebuke of the disciples. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? Now he's on the boat. And he said, Why are you so fearful? You, you, ever feel, you ever feel that way sometimes? When fear comes in and you say, Why? Why do I feel this way? I know, the, I know I'm saved. I know I'm kept. And I know what the book says that He's going to see us through. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. John 14 said that He will not leave us comfortless. He will come to us. And so He looks at His disciples and he says, why are you so fearful and how is it that you have no faith? And those two things are, are opposites of each other. If you have one, you probably are not going to have the other. When we have fear, we lack faith, but yet when we have faith, we lack fear. Now I'm glad tonight that the Lord understands us. Psalms 103, what was it? He, he said, for He knoweth our frame. He knows what we are. He knows that we can be a fearful people. He knows that we let uh, situations come upon us. And, uh, and listen, he, he knows that we get to what. David said in Psalms 56, and the only time that I could find in David's life that he ever made this statement, he said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. David, if you look at any other time that David talks about fear, that David talks about being afraid, that any time in his life he said, I will not be afraid. He all the time talks about not fearing and not being afraid. But one time in Psalms 56, he said, What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Can I say tonight that if your boat gets full, just continue to trust in the Lord. If you're saved, He's on board your boat tonight. That boat will go to the other side. It cannot help itself. It has to go to the other side. You will get there. It may get beat on, and you may worry, and it may be full when you get there, but you will get there. It's going to happen. I read you this a few minutes ago. For when we were coming to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Without were fightings, within were fears. But in the very next verse, he said, But nevertheless, God that comforteth those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus. God sent the Apostle Paul comfort in his heart. He gave him Titus. He sent him Titus to help him. He sent him somebody to comfort him. Now don't the Lord do this that way sometimes? He just sends us somebody or He sends us something. Sends a message. Sends some scripture. Sends a song. Sends a friend. And I found verse 41 very, I'll just use this word, very funny. And they feared exceedingly. They were fearful before, but now they're very fearful. For what manner of man is this? They said that even the winds and the seas obey him. You thought they were afraid before. They're really fearful, but their fear has changed. It has changed in that from a fear of of perishing and being in jeopardy and of a sure death, but now of a fear of reverence. Because they said, who is this? That even the winds and the seas obey Him. Tonight we need to look to Him and we need to listen for Him and we need to lean on Him in the midst of it all. When your boat gets full, boy, if you're fearful tonight, you can let Him have it. And you might have to come and, and just be honest and say, and be like the disciples and say, Lord, don't you care that we perish? And you know what? He'll help us. Let's bow our heads tonight.